Some Magazine. Hello once again, this is Doc Rotten, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. <laughs> Each week, my co-host Jeff Moore, Chris of Cleveland, Deidre, and I will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we are reviewing Possessor from Brandon Cronenberg. There's a last name you might find familiar. Mm -hmm. All right, joining me this week is the one and only Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I feel you owe me apology. An apology. <laughs> no, you know! good to be here. <laughs> good to be here. Oh, also God. joining us this week is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl. How you doing? I'm freaking fantastic. I mean, I have all my appendages, and you know, hey, that that's always a plus. Yeah. Yes. Little little moving fingies. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's welcome our guest, <laughs> Christopher. Award winning filmmaker, Christopher King Moore. What did I walk into? <laughs> uh, I'm doing great. By the way, I want to congratulate Shudder on winning their first or uh, getting their first uh, Golden Globe nomination for La oh. Luna. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. And the first uh, Guatemalan. Um, film ever nominated for a golden globe so shutters in the big league yeah. that's awesome yeah we reviewed that last summer didn't we yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. or spring or Wait. something i usually get the times mixed up crystal's crystal's the movie one pause I was on the what's going on yeah. all right <laughs> what we're going to do tonight is we're going to review the film possessor we're going to start off giving our initial thoughts then we're going to talk you about need to recalibrate yeah, recalibrate. And then we're going to wrap things up with our oh, final thoughts and our score and our favorite scene. Oh, man. All right. But uh, what film <laughs> are we talking about? We are talking about Possessor. No body is safe. Get it? <laughs> wah, wah. Get it, Christopher? Do you get it? Uh, uh, so, did you write that? Uh, no, it was on okay. the... Um, this sounds like a really bad dad joke for a uh, poster. No, it's actually... It's I actually, love it. The tagline yeah. all right, it, uh, is available starting February 1st, 2021 on Hulu. So it's available now, written and directed by Brandon Cronenberg. Uh, the cast includes Andrea Risenborough, Christopher Abbott, and Jennifer Jason Lee. Uh, the plot synopsis is Possessor follows an agent who works for a secretive organization that uses brain implant technology to inhabit other people's bodies, ultimately driving them to commit assassination for high paying clients. High paying clients that want people dead. Okay. All right. Let's start off with our first impression. And since we have a guest, let's start off with Christopher G. Moore. Sir. Uh, well, I saw the non erect wiener aversion. Oh, um, right. So <laughs> we have that going for just so just know there's two versions of this film there's the uncut version and the circumcised version, I guess. Um, <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I I really love this film. I think, um, it, it's you know, it's it's funny because usually when you have like the somebody who's a uh. Uh, a, a child of a, a famous director, you kind of wonder if they're going to follow in their fat father's shoes, or or if they're going to do something different. And he's the, um, yeah, the, the the body horror apple hasn't fallen far from the <laughs> demented tree. That's um, the truth. And uh, this this film feels like a almost like a nice companion piece to Videodrome in some ways. Uh, a little mm -hmm. bit of scanners has a little bit of of yeah. uh, has a little bit of the color scheme of like. Um, uh, what's the one about the, the about the twins? David Cronenberg. Oh, film. Dead Ringers. Dead Ringers Dead has Ringers? some of the color scheme yeah. of twins because he has Ooh, a lot of I love that. The visual palette of this film is amazing. It, my my eyes were weeping in happiness no. at some of the the use of blues and reds. Um, the color scheme, the production design is, you know, off the charts with. You know the the tech the technology is so cool looking and it feels feels very David Cronenberg. It feels like mm -hmm. those things that he creates in his own universe, but but it feels like these sleek versions of like you know uh, virtual reality helmets and that kind of thing. Um, so there's some really cool production design they do in this. Uh, really cool uh, places they shot at, and also some really intense, amazing acting by the actors in this. Uh, you know, of course. Uh, 
we love Angie Riseborough because her role in Mandy and yes. uh, you, she really shows her abilities. And then also just the, the use of um, some of the weird stuff that happens. There's, there's almost like a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark moment of melting <laughs> faces and bodies. That's Ooh, there really is cool. That. That's done pra- seems to be done practically. I'm not sure. Um, and just the, the weird little visions and stuff. Um, but yeah, the story is such an interesting concept. Um, and but yeah, it does definitely doesn't shy away from the violence. Um, and the uncut version definitely, you know, uh, doesn't shy away from from showing a little bit more than what you normally see in films. Uh, and there's a really sort of crazy moment of of melding of minds that, uh, mm. like, what? Where did that come from? Um, so yeah, I really love this film. It, I, I, it, it's it's bleak, but it's so interesting. I think I think the only thing that kind of threw me off, I think, it felt like the the ending was a little bit of abrupt, and I was actually a little bit confused at the end that I had to go online and look up what actually happened, and then it made more sense to me. But because I had to like, I wasn't exactly sure what totally had transpired that it kind of threw me off and i think that's only the only main main critique that i have about it but i think it's such an interesting concept and i think just the the character the andrea raspberry's character her character in this and how you know her delving into this sort of weird universe has made her off to where she's not herself and to where she even has to sort of like she even has to act get into her character with going back to her home life, you know, which is so weird when you're to that sort of like uh, disconnected from things when she's being so connected, sticking that USB in her head to, uh, to get certain things to happen. So yeah, I really love this film. I think it's really brilliant, dark, twisted, demented, and visually gorgeous despite all the violence and stuff that happens in it. Yeah. Did I mention that Sean Bean was in this? Sean Bean. Sean Bean. Yeah. 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 He's in it, and, He's and in it. some horrible <laughs> things He's happen to him. him. Yes, yes. He's a horrible yeah. person. And he kind of deserves oh, it. Well, Sean Bean isn't, but maybe John Parsons, the character he played. Oh, yeah, I think okay. he's in his contract for things to go wrong with him. Yes, yeah. I mean, watch Game of Thrones. Uh, Crystal, how you doing? What is oh your first impression of Possessor? So if anyone knows me, they know that I am obsessed with the father and now I'm totally oh, yeah. obsessed with the son. I love this movie so much. I was concerned, to be honest with you, because I love David Cronenberg's work so much. I mean, I have hardly a bad word to say about anything of his. So I was a little nervous going into this. And um, just from the first scene they he got me like her trying to put in the little probe i i just was like it was just really well done and it was it all the story is just it's so good it makes so much sense it's so easy to follow and even though it's one of the easiest movies to follow there is so much weirdness in this but it doesn't distract you because there's moments where the weirdness is kind of allowed so it's kind of cool. It's almost a dreamlike state. So it's like, okay, this is just happening inside mind's eye, sort of. Oh, I love the violence. And there's plenty of blood and gore and crazy, weird, intrusive behaviors for, from the companies and from the people. I just think it's fabulous. I think the acting was phenomenal. I think the shots are just gorgeous i think the intertwining of the minds is was done so well and so brilliantly and i think both actors handled it handled it very very well and i love what he did with the whole oh i don't want to give anything away but the you know the masks and all that sort of stuff i think it was just done really brilliantly i i am super excited to see what he does next i think he's a very worthy son there you I, go I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> i'm like uh i you know i mean i see some of 
his father in him, but I do think he has his own storytelling. I think I think he he'll, he's going to come. Although Christopher mentioning the Dead Ringers, t so when I look at it, it's like I want to see. I do see something new and different and original, and I do think there's something unique to his. But I do see. I mean, I like weird. The weirder, the better. So this was perfect. It was really good. I mean, I'm not going to say perfect because I'm. That means I <laughs> probably have to. <laughs> you, can't, yeah. you, can't, you can't do two fires in one year. All right, Jeff. I, I, I'm, I can't handle this. I'm no. like, no. What is your first impression of Possessor, sir? I'm with you guys. I like this a lot. And I saw this uh, whenever it came out on VOD. I watched it. And uh, I don't know. Crystal's always telling me how easy to understand stuff is on movies that I'm confused <laughs> by. <laughs> so, uh, I liked it a lot, but there was I had questions, you know, when it was done. So watching it this time through, uh, plus, as uh, Christopher mentioned, there were scenes like, wait a minute, I don't remember that. <laughs> I think I want to remember that. <laughs> so, um, nice to have that confirmed. Uh, but I, I loved the way the story was told, was told in that there's no explaining going on. It's just you're seeing what's happening, and you yeah. have to pick it up based on the events and, and, and the day-to-day -day dialogue that's taking place between the characters. And it can be done, but you have to pay attention. And uh, I just thought it was a great idea, and it was enough of a new idea that, at least for me, that I did not see the ending coming. So really? That's that interesting. That was a, a bit of a, uh, well, especially because it's kind of a taboo kind of thing. So anyway, mm. uh, I thought it was great. I loved the violence, loved the special effects. I thought it was beautiful. There was one shot there that it wasn't, it wasn't that important to the story, but that one shot of that one building where we saw all those window panes yeah. that were all these brilliant blues and turquoises, that was just gorgeous. The rotating of the camera. The yeah. Camera. Was, well, yeah, yeah. Um, also, I need to bring up Christopher Abbott. Uh, the male lead was in The Piercing. Remember mm. when we did that a couple years ago? And he was also in It Comes at Night. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the okay, Joel yeah. Edgerton movie and Tuppence Middleton. We did that f weird film with David Cronenberg in it, the Canadian film. You remember oh, that? Yeah. He was like the yes. scuba diver with the podcast yes. or something. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah Tuppence Middleton. In the alien movie. restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Disappearance at Clifton Hill is the, is the oh, film. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tuppence Middleton was the female lead in that who plays uh, Christopher Abbott's character's girlfriend. Or Sean Bean's daughter. Oh, wow. daughter. Yeah, fiance, right? His fiance. Or not Sean Bean's, but never mind. You're right. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record here. Yeah, I like this as well. It, it, it certainly um, gives you a lot of very strange and unusual concepts without making you terribly confused. Uh, mm -hmm. If you pay attention, like, like, uh, like uh, Jeff said. Uh, there, it's it's all there. The exposition that it does have is minimal, and what is truly exposition is very subtle. I mean, they do explain things. They do take the time to talk about you know the the little contraption. But I mean, even before that, you kind of you know everybody's charged their phone. They know what's going on here, right? They know when you plug your phone into your your computer. You know, it it's, it's all very clear. Um, but yeah, the, the what <laughs> the images are haunting. I thought, and, and I will probably have a hard time forgetting many of them. Uh, I I always thought the poster was a bit strange, and I didn't understand it. But now that I've seen the movie, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, I get the poster, and it is. It's <laughs> um, I I'm still thinking about this movie, even now. Um, at first, it was because there are some rather gross scenes in it that that really got me. Uh, I don't often get got by gross scenes, but there's a couple in here that got me. I think I even shared that with the the crew on. on yeah, you know, and that made me laugh. Like, Ooh, gross. Uh, 
But yeah. what's really good to me now is I'm thinking about um, what the underlying subtext of this movie. There's, to me, there's a repetition in a circle in here that I want to discuss offline. It just seems like there's more to it than what's on the surface. And I don't know if anybody else came to that conclusion. Um, but there's just, there's, there's some parallels between, you know, the three adventures that we see her on, right? Uh, there's these three little tasks. One of them isn't a task. It's where she goes home. Um, and there's just some parallels that make me think that something else is happening. Um, maybe Christopher can enlighten me with what the ending meant because the ending kind of got me too. I was like, well, okay, it, it, it's an ending, but I don't, I don't know exactly what's happening. But um, if, if you're talking about the butterfly <laughs> and all that stuff, but the there's the performance, the performances are are extraordinary, right? Andrew Riseborough, and I think I called her Risenborough in the beginning, forgive me, but Riseborough is, um, she is phenomenal. And it's such a, ah, what kind of performance do you want to call this? Because it's not over the top and it's not, oh, re no. and it's not restrained, not, not in the way you say a restrained performance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is not a flamboyant performance. You know, it's not like Nicolas Cage or anything, but it's, it's um I think it's it it's is very I think she is playing a reserved, a reserved intense character. Yeah, intense. I think intense is where I was going with that. It's just so she's always this I don't know, she's quiet, but she feels like she's a lit fuse. And it's really mm -hmm. interesting um performance. Uh and Jennifer Jason Lee won me over. I was happy about having her on this. I was like, Yeah. yeah. I like you. This is good. Well, I can say that what happened at the end was something that she wanted all along. Oh, well, I, yes. And that's not what I'm confused about. What I'm confused okay. about is after that. But yes. Okay. Yes, she. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah there, is, there is a lot of that in there. But um, yeah, Let, let's talk about the film. There, uh, this movie is gross. There is uh, <laughs> a particular scene. I will say it's with Sean Bean. That really made me uh, uh, question the the <laughs> how smart it was to be snacking at the time. Um. <laughs> I thought it was, I, honestly, I think it was really beautiful. I do. I think it was done so well, and it looked so good. It did. I and it so didn't... I was like, yes. It didn't stop. Oh man. Yes. Oh man. Poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah. Yeah, Let's I don't just say for him. that losing your head is a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Sean Bean just can't make it through the end of a film anymore. Sorry, spoilers, but I think oh, he's yeah. Get out. <laughs> yeah, he just needs to keep an eye out for some <laughs> things. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. Just saying, just saying. Uh, what what stood out to you, Jeff? Uh, you, we talked about the performances, and Chris Chris brought up a lot of the camera work and stuff. Is there anything else that really made you stop in your tracks and notice this film? No, I you know the, the, the couple of scenes that you're sort of alluding to, without being too specific, were uh, you know I mean even even for tried and true horror, it was it was uh, pretty shocking in a way yes yes um i liked the interplay between uh is it tate and and voss tate and voss. Uh, yeah boss uh they especially when and i don't want to give too much away but this back and forth on who's who and and how they played it i thought was was great I, and i'm sure part of that is direction but um just really interesting it kept me thinking you know about what was going on and what was the interplay between those personalities yeah the, the inner monologue, inner monologue if you want to call it that mm -hmm. uh between those two it really is quite interesting because you really i'm always left guessing who's actually on the winning side of that discussion right that mm -hmm. continual discussion um so the, so we so Hulu has the uncut version. Is that what we're discovering? Mm -hmm. um, Crystal, did, did were you shocked by any of the 
<laughs> visuals that we got. I, you know me, not I am cool. like, I loved it. Like, I don't want to talk it's about. Surprised it's, a little bit. It's pro. Maybe not well, shocked. Surprised that it was. But you know, oh, see, I'm so bad. Yes, I was surprised. I was okay. Honestly, I was surprised when he was watching people. Well, I mean, it's a crazy thing. So these company, the company that the lead male works for basically spies on people. I don't think I'm giving any too much away here. No, and, it's a very small thing of the plot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that scene actually is the one that surprised me, not the actual sex scene. That actually made sense to me. Because I think, because it just made sense. I mean, yeah. obviously oh, yeah, yeah. it is kind of what's happening. It is kind of what it is. But yeah, to see, you know, the, that, that surprised me. That's, well, that's a good point. Cause I, I mean, most of us think of data mining as pulling uh, ones and zeros off the internet, you know, that to learn things about people, address, stuff like that. But in this one, they were actually going in and, Yep. Taking pictures and, and talking about yeah. the color of their shears, their yeah, gray yeah. shears. No Please, please. Drama, it's no <laughs> please. Yeah. Well, and I think I think that's to me that's what I loved about this because there's things in it that I'd never really seen before or thought about. You know, because we always think about like data mining is like oh they just track your Google searches or they listen to your phone, but these people right. who are like tapping into your your video feed from your computers or your phones. And they're just looking around your house and seeing like what things you own just so that they could probably throw specific ads at you or whatever, or whatever they're using it for. It's, it's, I mean, that kind of stuff is kind of interesting to where even there's people in the world that like that know that, like that one girl talks about like that uh, he makes, she makes sure that he knows what brand vibrator she uses. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's like so many, and then just the whole concept of like the whole uh, process and stuff. Um, I think for me also just the, the, um, the, the look of, well, not the look, but um, just the, cause, cause they talk about the mental stability of, of uh, Riseboro's character, you know, how, how, they have to do these tests to make sure she's come out of the, but then they're not really look, they're not really, it seems like they're not really looking to see if she's becoming psychotic, which, which it feels like it's one of those things to where, you, you, I mean, this isn't given too much away, but in the very beginning scene, but she's like running her hand through the blood and she's almost like, uh, there seems to be like a weird fascination with well, things to where she doesn't want to like, she likes it. She likes it. And she does. She, she likes it. <laughs> she likes it and she's she's getting bored with killing people the normal way. It's like, oh, I'm not gonna shoot him. I'm gonna she's stab him. She's a serial him. killer. You know, so it's so it's like so it's almost like she's she's getting into it, mm -hmm. which is kind of funny at the same time. She's she's also which is you know, the underlying meaning of can't pulling the trigger can't pull the trigger, which ties in to the whole meaning of this whole thing of her pulling the trigger and, and being totally disconnected from this life that she, she has. So when she's killing the people, the reason she, when you stab someone, it's personal. And I think that she has been doing this for so long that that is how she is. She gets personal with people. But you, if you do realize she does shoot, well, I don't want to give anything away. She does shoot someone. She does pull the trigger on someone. And what's interesting about it is that someone that she's had sex with and so it does make it a little less personal, which I found really compelling, and it completely makes sense. Well, you know that she would be more disconnected from that. Well, and then that's the thing. The whole the whole thing of it is like there's certain things that she doesn't mind doing, but when it connects mm -hmm. to her personal life, like her own mm -hmm. life or yeah, other people, that's why that she she's trying. She'd rather other people do that. You know what I mean? And that's the whole that plays into the whole point without giving anything away. That plays the whole point of this movie. Of her being connected to this person and stuff. Who also, I feel like Christopher is it Christopher Abbott? That's the main guy. Yeah. I think he does a really great job of also embodying some of her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Affectations, yeah. the way she moves, mm -hmm. or she's using her little vape pen. You know, the way he's acting, you can tell that he's sort of examined how she does her thing too. But I mean, it's just like it's really brilliant. All the different things, and and even even if uh, for me the the ending kind of abrupt. I, I love that. 
we have the the whole book ending scene of her having to go through all these items mm-hmm. and her response really reflects how she has changed after mm-hmm. the ele- the things that happened at the end which yeah, is like, no oh, more God, guilt she's, she's, no more guilt she's all up to- okay there you go yeah spoilers mm-hmm. uh, but it's not it's not a big spoiler <laughs> but it's man. not a, it, you, you won't get it until you get it mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. Will Crystal give another five? That's the big question. All right, but before we do. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> before we do, <laughs> if you're still hanging with us, one we will. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Hit the subscribe button or share the video. It's a great way to help us out, real easy. Uh, you can hit the like button, smash it if you like. Um, just Bam, hit the thing. Smash that like button like yeah. it owes you money. There you go. Wow. Okay, do that. Uh, we also want to <laughs> take a quick moment to thank our patrons. Uh, and we're not going to smash them. We're going to give them big hugs. Uh, we yeah. <laughs> Because without them, we couldn't do the Gruesome Magazine podcast. We couldn't do Horror News Radio, Decades of Horror, and Heroes and Droids, among all the other things we do. So uh, thank you guys and gals so much for helping us out. All right, now it's time. Yes. Our final thoughts, our score, and our favorite scene, starting off with the one and only award-winning filmmaker, Christopher G. Um. <laughs> yeah, I I really love I really love this film. I really want to I kind of want to jack into the brain of Brandon Cronenberg because mm-hmm. I think he really has a lot of talent, and I really want to sort of like steal some of that stuff for myself as a filmmaker or at least uh because it definitely inspires me and some of the visuals i think um the you know normally i'm not a big fan of like a lot of artsy nightmarish type stuff but i think lately i've kind of started falling for it um but yeah the 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 scenes where it's like that melding the mind melding or whatever is happening there's some i'm really sort of like great practical effects with melding of body parts and melting that feels like the you know the 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 people dying because of the ark of the covenant and raiders of the lost ark there's some <laughs> really cool sort of uh a visual melding and then even the uncut version you get to see sort of a uh <laughs> you get to see the, the the a nice interesting part of the sex scene um mm-hmm. so yeah it's and, and and even just um and and, and when he sort of like also the whole poster scene when you have that whole scene and involves that skin mm-hmm. mask or whatever mm-hmm. that whole thing's very nightmarish but it, it also plays into the whole storyline as well um cuz when people are in bod- going in other body people's bodies and taking over their consciousness and and uh, i don't know there's a lot of sort of visual metaphors for a lot of things in this film but it's visually really even though it's very brutal with its violence and it's out there with their wrecked penises, it's still uh, <laughs> the cinematography is really gorgeous in scenes and, and, and even the stuff involving gore and stuff, I think is shot really well. And, and, you know, to, to incorporate the sort of nightmarish visions and stuff. So, yeah, I think this is a brilliant film. I really love it. And I think, you know, it, even though we, he's probably always going to be compared to his dad, I think he's, he's putting his own spin on that type of, uh, storylines and, and characters and, and doing his own thing that, that feels that it might have been come from his father's seed, but at the same time, he's <laughs> he's uh, branching out into his own little uh, nightmarish world of body horror. Um, so uh, if I were to give a rating, I would give it... I think my only issue, I, I think, was the ending. Um, something about the ending had me a little bit confused and felt a little bit abrupt. And, uh, you know, after looking into stuff and stuff, I'm more comfortable with it. But I think because that initial impression, I can't give it a full five, but I'll give it at 4.75 erect erections, um, (laughs) erect penises, 4.75 erect penises. Um, (laughs) As for uh, YouTube, (laughs) (laughs) oops, Um, uh, as for uh, favorite scene. Um, hmm. Mm. I, I guess I'll say, geez, it's kind of hard to say. Um, there you go. 
I don't know. I, I guess I'll say the the um, the. I, I love the. There's a lot of different things I could probably pick. It's hard to pick, but I'll say visually, I really love the 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 nightmarish melding scene mm. where they're melding between the two. Um, uh, when he's sort of transferring <laughs> consciousness and stuff, I love that because it's so, it's so sort of grotesque, but at the same time, gorgeous and beautiful to watch. It's it's a, uh, you know, it's it's very artsy, but in a good way. Um, and I think, you know, when you can incorporate that, and it doesn't really, it doesn't feel jarring. It doesn't feel like it's out of place. It feels like a part of this nightmarish universe. I think it really works. So I'll I'll say that. All right, I like that. Yeah, uh, next, Crystal Cleveland. What is your final thoughts, your score, favorite scene for Possessor? So, obviously, I love this film. I think you should watch it multiple times. And um, that is all. I don't really have much more to say about it. It's not it's with the good. kids, right? I mean, I guess it depends what kind of parent you are. I watch <laughs> it with my kids. I totally watch it with my kids, but I'm, you know, like... See, like I'm, I don't shelter. Kids are older too. Yeah, that's true too. Um, so I. Mm. Can you do it? Are you going to do it? Yeah, I'm going to give it a five. Yeah, because I because I love it. I do love it. I Ew. just. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like maybe, maybe, I don't know. Did somebody maybe tap in the house. brain. <laughs> it's probably I should be pulling this probe got out. It's got a super USB. weird port in your brain well, it's just port. weird i'm like mm, yeah waka waka so <laughs> i want to go with the sex scene because i just think it's brilliantly done but really there's one scene that struck me and it's just it's gonna be silly to y'all but for some reason i thought it was a riot and it's just a little polka polka it's when the fixer or the plant comes in and uh she wants the plant to you know help her with her issue and he's like, no, 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 I'm a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> After funny. all this stuff that they're doing, and he's like, oh, no, no, no. And I'm like, <laughs> that's cute. So, yeah, that scene got me. I like that yeah. one. That, I did not expect that, but that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, right. yeah. Jeff Moore, what is your final thoughts, your score, and your favorite scene? Sir? I, I can't really think of anything negative to say about it um i mean I, i'm sure not everybody's gonna like it but i it's the kind of thing i love uh so i'm i'm giving this a five and uh my favorite scene and this is you know i, I think these are important but the opening scene just because we don't know exactly what's going on yet in the opening scene it just really sucked me in. I had so many things running through my mind. And when I think back on it, a lot of it had to do with other movies I'd seen. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, the the opening thing with the, uh, uh, with the emotions was making me flash back to Terminal Man. But that's because that, that's where I was at at that point and, and trying to figure out what was going on from there. So there was a lot of interesting things that were all the way up to the, you know, all the way through what happens at the, uh, whatever that is, a dinner, banquet, or reception, and and when she uh, uh, comes out the other side, I just had me sucked in. <laughs> yes. Sucked in. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, and I... notice I did not mention any body parts when I... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. It, it is it is it is a very um, uh, I mean it, it is it's a bit psychedelic. It's a bit trippy at times, uh, especially when like the, the film. Some of the scenes that Christopher was mentioning are very out there in that you know, they're you know they're those are represented in a very dreamlike state quality and and you know like there's one part where and it's just. There's some really <laughs> mind-bending shots, and uh, the performances are really strong. The effects are great. The storytelling is hypnotic, right? It is really hypnotic, and it kind of grabs your attention. There's a, there's, there's all kinds of influences, um, even beyond 
the obvious his father um mm-hmm. uh, and and there are, there are some notable things that I don't think his father would ever do I think that the, the shot you talked about where the camera spins I don't think David Cronenberg would ever do something like that um uh, but then at the same time I felt kind of like the the whole structure of it felt very scanners to me I don't know why yeah um but just the uh, I don't know the pacing and and how I don't know there was something about it I just had that uh that that warm feeling that i'm watching that movie um i don't know why i said that but anyway i uh i I did like this i did like this it is definitely going to be one for the end of the year uh to talk about for certain and uh i but i'm not giving it as high a score as the three of you i'm giving it four and a half uh, Why? At the same time. No, I'm just kidding. Jeez. I thought four and a half was actually really, really You're a strong. Poopy duty head. I am a poopy poopy. Um, but, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not going to say because I don't want to. I don't want to say it on camera. But I will talk. Oh, about okay. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. But no, I thought it, I thought four and a half was really strong. I, it's an I, excellent. I, I it's an excellent it. score. So mm-hmm. the um, yeah. my favorite scene is Sean Bean. His, his his demise because that that made me gasp out loud and immediately <laughs> grab my phone and and share that gasp with everybody there. <laughs> um, I was I was truly shocked. I was truly shocked by that. Um, I think most people were shocked by that one. You I've know heard what? A lot of people mention it. I I completely forgot about that until now, and it probably would have been my favorite scene. But there is a part where the guy grabs Andrea's head. And I, I gasped. <laughs> he yeah. grabs her head, and it, it was so shocking. Oh. I gasped out loud, covered my mouth like one of those. Ooh, uh, well, not like that, but it's like oh, I actually visibly gasped at that scene. And I think I, I think I even told you on Facebook. I was like, I've gasped like visibly gasped like two times during this film, and that one was so shocking because I wasn't expecting it. Uh, so I think the practical effects on this film really work for those things mm-hmm. where you're like, oh, oh, whoa, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because yeah. uh, you know the poster, the whole scene that of that's around the poster, which follows what you're talking about almost immediately, yeah, but to the point where he's walking down the street with it, and it's just, uh, to me that was. Where you know, outside of the the actual killing and the bloodletting, that's where the horror actually was at its highest. Actual, yeah, uh, psychological horror. That's very creepy. Like, I want to see be, see somebody cosplay that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you yeah. imagine walking down the dark Atlanta street? <laughs> even yes. Another, even <laughs> seeing that walk up. Crystal. <laughs> Yes. Oh um, my yes, I, I can. That would be the scariest thing ever to happen. To <laughs> All right. All right. Well, there you go. That's our review of Possessor. It is streaming right now on Hulu and it's the uncut version. Um I don't know if I click, you know, a certain button to get there. <laughs> it just I don't know. I, I missed only, out. That's the only that's the only yeah. thing on there, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh check it only out. Version. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of it. It's 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 out there for you to watch. Um, did you gasp? That's it. How many times did you gasp? And, uh, you know, it's a little weird that we had to pay for the uncut version and then the, or the cut version, and we had to, for a free on subscription, you get you get the uncut version. Well, yeah, and I think even they got a little bit of theatrical release, and the theatrical release was the uncut version. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's very weird. weird how that works. All yeah. right. Well... Jeff, Crystal, thank you for joining me, and Christopher, thank you for uh, guest hosting. Yeah. Week, uh, oh, I you know when, when I heard you guys were done, I was like, I need to be in on this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.